and try to put together governance, which is the most undefined concept we have in business and in politics and, and in policies. Uh, it's a big box that covers everything, uh, all scenes. And I try to actually make it uh, uh, provide some examples of what we mean by governance, and in particular in the context of cities. And then I try to look at some solutions and, and partnerships, as the title of this session suggests. And the way I do, because um, we were forbidden to use slides, uh, I think I'm going to pick some of the sound bites that came up in the conversation so far, uh, like embrace the power of city life. Great quote. But before then, I'd like to ask a question, and please hands up. Uh, how many of you watch Blade Runner 2047? Small group. So that was like, it was defined in a dystopian fantasy based in 2047, so 30 years ahead. I think, again, looking, scanning the room here and the demographics, I think we all, we stand a, a, a reasonably good chance that most of us will be around in 2047 to see how our cities will look like. So what's going wrong in Blade Runner 2047, apart from this mega fantasy? It's a, a an ecological disaster is an ethical disaster, and it is an inclusiveness disaster. All these three levels overlap together, and the result is what we saw, all of those of us who watched the film. So this really helps me to define governance and why it's critical today in dealing with uh, the, the kind of disruptive technology and innovation we have, which is great, but also problematic. This is why governance is important to avoid that kind of uh, dystopic scenario, which, again, I don't believe is entirely uh, avoidable, uh, or at least is not a, a pure fantasy. So I would define governance with three dimensions, sustainability, resilience, and inclusiveness. And by the way, until five years ago, in the policy world where I partly work, the uh, inclusiveness was not touched. It wasn't a concept that resonated uh, with policymakers because we thought there wasn't a problem. There are then four overlapping levels, and some of them we discuss today, but not all of them. One is local, the other level is regional, national and international. And these four levels need coordination. They have to be together because we got what well, technically we talk, uh, we define as spillovers, externalities. And these elements, these levels all talk to each other, so we need coordination. There's no point to try to have the perfect city if the rest of the world is in a big uh, uh, hole. So we all need to work together. And then we need to think in terms of long term, so many years, because the demographic trends, which are really very compelling that drive change in our world, are long term. And some of them are actually very, we know them already, so there is not, nothing to forecast in a difficult way. Solutions. First of all, there is a whole discussion about governance is rights. So people in the city have rights to, be, to work, to be cured, to be safe, to be protected. But there is a big divide here, and again, we didn't discuss it today, and it's the divide between citizens and those who are not. And this is a, is a problem we all face in our cities. There are people who do not belong. These are immigrants. And immigrants are internal migrants, case of China, they have a different status. People who come from the, the countryside are not citizens like those who live in the cities. And those who come from other countries, they're not citizens because they don't have nation nationality of the passport. That is a big divide and a big problem in terms of rights because they find the way people live and work and, uh, and uh, are part of the cities. So again, we have what we call sanctuary cities. Those are cities that refuse to work at the, with the national authorities and sort of ostracize immigrants. Again, the recognitions that people who come to our cities should be somehow integrated. And we cannot exclude the poor, we cannot exclude the children from healthcare, education, and so on. So that's why some cities have chosen to be sanctuary. And that's why, but it's important to reconcile at the level of rights, the national and the local level. And also is something as a solution we need to face. Talking about solution, today we talk about using innovation to define identities. And I was very interested in what Evans 
talked about in, in terms of, again, the right to privacy and the, right, and, and the need to disclose or to identify to authentication. So again, it will be the, the, we need an innovation and we need some solution to identify people who come to our city and they need to have the rights recognized. But again, we can do it a lot through technologies. And let me finish with partnerships and then I use my business hat here. So cities are an engine of growth, economic growth and innovation. And the thing we heard this morning, we heard this morning, is the cost of upgrading our cities, and particularly for us in Europe, uh, who have uh, old cities. And so cities that are centuries old, and so obviously melt, built and, uh, and with different criteria. So how we can update this infrastructure? Now, when I talk about infrastructure, it's physical infrastructure, but also social infrastructure. Well, again, there is a way to harness uh, private savings uh, investment because, again, growth, economic growth, sustainability, and long-term uh, revenues is something which resonates well with uh, many investors. And so, impact investing is now the big word in the business world, and is thinking in terms, again, of sustainability, resilience, and, uh, and inclusiveness. It means that we think, for example, of a big uh, hospital, and there is a case in Northern Italy, with money from the European Investment Bank, but also private partnerships. And this hospital not only provides healthcare at a very competitive, uh, with a very competitive model, but it helps uh, the local community to create jobs. And again, a tool here is private and public procurement. So public procurement in particular can actually drive policy change in terms of support entrepreneurship, supporting inclusiveness in the labor market and, uh, and creating a more integrated community. So there are a lot of tools there. We need to understand what, they are, what they can do and how they can we put them together. And, and so again, it's very important that we look at a big picture, but also the way to coordinate everybody's actions. Thank you. Mm.